Hi everyone, Brightphone here, back with another video. And today I want to talk about how to get binaries into memory. In other words, create fileless malware that doesn't exist on disk. You are taking your binary, downloading it, and then shoving it directly into memory. Now, this is a good AV evasion technique. It basically means that if it has good on disk scanning and it's an AV product, that it will get caught. And a lot of AVs, things like Defender, CrowdStrike, those types of AVs are really, really good at scanning files on disk. They're not so good at catching stuff in memory, especially if you take AMZ out of the way. So AMZ, the anti-malware systems interface, you can do an AMZ bypass, download your binary, shove it into memory, and run it. So this is a good way to get tools like Rubius or uh, curb relay up, sharp spray, anything like that directly onto a system and not leave any tracks behind. It's only in memory. So if the system is then shut down, your malware is gone, right? Your hack tool is gone. They would need to get a memory image for you to, uh, for them to analyze that. So what I want to show you first is PowerShell Armory. So PowerShell Armory tool by CFalta it allows you to put a whole bunch of different PowerShell scripts or uh, binaries into a script that you can then download with an AMZ bypass. So if we take a look at PowerShell Armory here, and I'll just ls in the directory, there is new psarmory.ps1, which is what we need to use to create an armory. And then there is the psarmory.json file. So if we cat out the psarmory.json file, you can see here are the different tools that I want as part of this. Now notice we've got PowerView, we've got Invey, we've got PowerMan, we've got Sharpound, and we've got Rubius. Now notice this is an executable, right? So we also can use some tools here to convert an executable into a PowerShell script. So if we CD into the utilities folder here, and I'll clear my screen just so everybody can see this. We're into the utilities folder. Inside the utilities folder, there is a tool called convert to PowerShell.ps1. And I'll show you how this works. So you do cat, then you do raw, and then you give it convert to PowerShell. And then you pipe this to invoke expression or IEX. So we'll pipe this into invoke expression or IEX. And now we can go convert to PowerShell as a script. So see, it, it's asking for a path. So what I'm going to do now is I'll give it the path. The path. We'll see colon backslash users hunter. We'll go desktop. <clears throat> and then I'll use Hagrid, which is my version of Rubius that's just been encoded to get by get by AV, right? In a previous video, I re-encoded Rubius so that we get by AV. But now we want this in PowerShell. So it just now converted to PowerShell. Now I already had this up here, but you can see it will convert basically any C-sharp executable into PowerShell code. So take a look now. I have Invoke Hagrid and Invoke Hagrid 3 uh, in here. So if I run Invoke Hagrid, so let's do that. We'll do the same cat raw. Invoke Hagrid PS1. We'll pipe it to IEX because this is like a type of download cradle. And then can go invoke Hagrid. And then it would look for the command flag. So if I go invoke Hagrid and I look command, I'll just give it help. And you can see. This is Rubius. We go back to the top here. And boy, is that long. But yeah, Rubius 2.1.1, and it's kind of messed up because I have messed with this version to get it by AV. But now it's in PowerShell. So if I pop open PowerShell ICE over here, and I had Invoke Shadow Spray open, but I'll show you what the one we just created looks like. Take a look at Invoke Hagrid here. 
And you can see inside the script, there is a message body, and that message body has a huge amount of base64. Right? So it's base64 encoded. And then it's using system reflection to slimly load and convert from base64 to then load this into a memory as its starting point, right? And then it splits it out. And then it looks for the private method of hagrid.program get method main, which is the main executable in that code. And then it gives it invoke, right? So essentially, you've taken your C-sharp binary and converted it into a PowerShell script that you can then use with an AMSI bypass to run it directly in memory. Nothing on disk. So this is not a new concept. This has been around for a while. Um, PowerShell Armory lets you build your own. If you want the pre-built ones, you can take a look at PowerShell Pack, and you can see there's many tools that have already been built in here, or you can just download Cradle these in. There's Rubius right there. Safety Cat, Sarnai, Seatbelt, Shadow Spray. Many of these tools are already pre-built. You don't have to do this on your own. Now, if you have some specific ex executable that you want to do, like I just did with my version of Hagrid, you can do that with Convert to PS1. Now, <clears throat> the beauty of this is that you can create an armory with PowerShell Armory, and you can load this on a system. So I've already gotten an armory up into Updog on my Kali box. But what I want to show you before we do that is also We've talked about cradles, download cradles. So what we want to look at is different methods of using download, download cradles to get things into memory. So there is a tool called Cradle Crafter. And Cradle Crafter, really cool tool to sh for learning, basically, to show you what would go into memory and tactics you can use to get stuff into memory versus disk. So here we would just go <clears throat> import module. Actually, let me clear this so everybody can see it there. We'll clear it out and go import module cradle crafter dot slash. I think it's invoke. Invoke cradle crafter PSD1 just like that. So you're importing the module into PowerShell. And now you can go invoke. Cradle Crafter. And when you do this, you're going to see a whole bunch of code run to the screen, but it's going to tell you here is how to craft a whole bunch of different download cradles. Because right now it's doing these download cradles on my system, all of these different variants. But the cool thing here is you can just tell it memory or disk. So if I tell it memory, it's then going to give me all of the different ways that I can load something into memory. So if I want to do, we'll do NetWeb string. So we'll do memory NetWeb. Oh, if I type string just like that. And then it's going to tell me, oh, I, it has to be capitalized. And a slash NetWeb string. Now it's going to give me the methods under that. I'm going to rearrange class method invoke. So we'll do invoke. So if we go invoke. And now here are the methods under that. I can choose all these different types. So we'll just do two, which is a very common one, IEX or invoke expression. So as you can see here, this is an example of an in-memory download cradle right here, and probably the most common one that I see most people use. So system net web client new download string, and then you give it to URL. But the cool thing about Cradle Crafter is it'll give you all sorts of different ways. So if you're being caught on the system net web client IEX version, maybe you do get alias, maybe you do cert util, maybe you do some other method to get your binary into memory. You can totally do that. But let's try to get this working on our other Windows host here. So here's our target, Clint. We're in PowerShell. As you can see, Defender, 
we want to make sure that's on. Real-time protection needs to be on, and it looks like it is. Real-time protection is on. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an AMZ bypass. We're going to do a download cradle, and we're going to get Rubius into memory. So I'll come over here to AMZ fail. I'll copy out my AMZ bypass. I'm going to run this from PowerShell. We'll see if it works. If it works, there we go. We got lucky that time. We'll jump over here to our hunter. Take our download cradle. And we're just going to change the URL string. So we'll paste this in here, but our URL is going to be our Kali box, which I have uploaded my armory to. So we'll go 192, 168, 136.37, port 9091. And then we want my armory. Let me make sure I spell this right dot es1 now I'll come over here and you can see got this in updog my armory dot ps1 and so when we download this it's going to download my entire armory and there it is everything that i had in my armory is now in memory on this system it is not on disk so now if i go invoke Rubius, and I give it just command help. You can see right there, we just got Rubius by AV in memory. It's a really cool technique to use in your pen test when you have a C sharp binary and you need to get something by, say you want to get seatbelt on here, same thing, just use PowerSharp pack download or encode it yourself with PowerShell Armory. But this is a really neat technique to get by AV, um, kind of a continuation on our series of how to get by Defender or how to get by uh, antivirus. If you have another antivirus on here, you need to make sure that the AMZ DLL is unhooked from that AV or that the bypass is working with that particular AV product. Uh, you just have to test it. Uh, also, when you're using PowerShell Armory, there's some obfuscation that is done by default. You can put your own obfuscator in there and that's going to make things even better. So uh, happy hacking and thanks for watching this. And I'll leave you once again with Hack the Planet to Defend Better. Thank you.